our king to root out heretics and maintain the purity of our parliament chambers. I have charged the Burgess with heresy, and today convocation will be summoned to judge him. I just wish to tie in what you said on Moodle to Martin Luther once more, um, that basically you said again, and I will say it one more time, therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This goes along with the fact that you've slandered, you've slandered the clergy, you've mocked convocation, you've mocked the charge of heresy, and you also said that we should rely more on scripture than by the word of the church, which actually created scripture to begin with. Um, and this ties into Luther because Luther wrote um, in the game book 126, In this way, therefore, the soul through faith alone, without works, of God justified, sanctified, and do with truth, peace, and liberty, and filled with every good thing, and is truly made the child of God. Um, we have all been saved. We will not let the corruption of a few within our church weaken us. You have obviously read Luther. You have obviously agreed with him. And you have said this before Parliament on record. Well, Chancellor, I don't agree with Luther. I'm a good Catholic, and I think that you're twisting my words. And we're up against the very powerful man here. We need to know what he's saying. We need to know how he's slandering the church. And Sorry, I think that it's you, it's a responsibility to be reading Luther, too, so that you can say. I helped to write Defense of the Seven Sacraments along with the Royal Highness. I know what Luther has said. And how I don't you carry it with me, showing it off to Parliament. I'm not showing it off, I'm just reading it. And yet you never spoke here against it. You say it's for purposes of education. But not once have you made a speech attacking Lutheranism. Not once have you defended the Catholic Church. Not once have you used these things you supposedly learn in the Lutheranism doctrine for the defense of the Catholic Church, as is your stated claim. What have you been up to? I believe you just stated the conclusion that it is something that we should all know what we are up against. Yeah, okay. if, he were, if he was a true Catholic, reading, reading the uh, Lutheranism text is, should be appalled to him. <laughs> You're still going to stand there and tell me that you did not advocate that there's justification by faith. Yes. Do you want me to read it to you again? However, the epistles of Paul to the Apostle of Romans, um, <coughs> actually in chapter 3, verse 28, say that therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of law. I, I, I think that there are things in the scripture that I can see how things could be construed in that way. You sound like a heretic yourself, Lister. Students realize that if they're to succeed, they cannot just speak persuasively. They have to have some facts at their disposal. They have to learn some of the history. They have to know the ideas. We were preparing a case through the speeches, and I looked. I, re I reread the three treatises, and I tried to find those quotations that would apply. It's not like you can just make everything up. You really do have to know the history. It's a highly interactive history class. That's kind of how I looked at it. It's not just writing this down for a paper. You have to know it well enough for you to be able to work with it, to be able to debate it. And if something unexpected comes up, you can deal with it. Most students are terrified of being at the podium or even responding to someone else who has raised a point. Slowly, they begin to let go of their papers, they may resort then to notes, but even more so, and I value this more than the podium uh, speeches, is the cross-table debate, which involves a handful of students at the beginning, and before it's all out, it will involve everybody. Because all they have to do is a few times realize they can open their voices in an argumentative way, and the ceiling doesn't fall down on top of them, that they realize that this is something they can do, that they can debate, that they can hold their own, they can advance a position. The best part has been learning to become more comfortable talking in front of people because I'm really shy and this class has really pushed me to be able to stand up in front of a lot of people and make a speech, sometimes not even really prepared. I'm not usually very good at talking in class, but I've gotten a lot better because of this class. The actual trial was really nerve-wracking. I think overall it was a positive experience because I mean, it was really intense, but I felt like I presented myself well, and I knew what I was talking about. Well, my favorite part was when I got to give the speech uh, about how I was a heretic. Not long ago, I stood before you accused of being a heretic. Now I say unto you, if a heretic believes that we should all read the Holy Scriptures and study them, that we might better ourselves in the eyes of God, and that no man may buy himself out of purgatory with coins of this earth, then I am a heretic. So then, a heretic is a man of God. A heretic is a true believer. 
A heretic is someone who speaks out against all that is wrong and unclean and hated by God. If it is my duty to die for my cause, then I die willingly. Then another might listen and might follow God more truly. social aspect of reacting within the classroom easily spreads to that outside the classroom. And I think it's really well developed to help you to get to know other people really well, really quickly. I just, I had a lot of fun scheming. Like we, we did some scheming at, you know, midnight of how, how if a certain thing went down we would threaten someone with heresy. <laughs> that was a lot of fun getting to threaten to set people on fire. It's very clear that there's a kind of bonding that goes on that I've never seen in any other class. It is uh, very, very striking. <laughs>